Get your woman. <laughs> he is not messing around. We are in breeding season. He's chasing his lady. Hey guys, it's Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. I'm going to talk to you about one of our favorite characters of this uh, Cross Timbers Bison herd, Dunbar. I know we've talked about, uh, about him quite a bit here in the past videos, but he is a character. He is the dominant bull here. We do have two younger bulls. We're going to talk about his interesting breeding behavior. So Dunbar right now is isolating another cow. This is Belle Star. She just had her first baby this year. She's one of our favorites. She's our feisty one. So he's courting her. I've talked to you a little bit about courting in a, in a video or two. Uh, so right now he's got her singled out. He's been with Peaches. And then he's also been with another cow called Quapaw. As you see, he's kind of separated from the herd. So I witnessed something the other day for the very first time Dunbar did. I've never seen this behavior before. I didn't even know it existed. But Dunbar just fed him, and we're just standing around. My, my wife is, is there, my mom. We're just sitting there talking, hanging out with Brooks. And I fed him, and of course he makes his around and kicks all the others off of the troughs, and then he comes out in front of me. Well, there's a bison waller right in front of one of the uh, feed troughs. And so what Dunbar does is he kind of is actually right in front of me. I watched him roll in it for a little bit and just dust it off like normal. And then uh, a couple minutes later, he came back and then he actually peed on this bison waller. He peed on it and then he rolled in it. Um, I've never seen that before. I saw, saw his... Uh, his uh his baby maker spread uh spread his love or his scent i don't know what you call it uh, um <laughs> spread it everywhere and then he rolled in it so um i guess that's nature's uh cologne i don't know attractant But then what was interesting after that was Bell Star, the one I just was talking to you about, Bell Star actually came by and she didn't pee on it, but she rolled in it. It was the craziest thing. I just watched Dunbar pee on this. He rolled in it, dusted, dusted in it, rolled, rolled in his own urine. And then Bell Star came by, she smelt of it, and she rolled in it too as well. And I've noticed that in that spot the past couple of days, other, other females have came by there and smelt of that. They keep smelling around this. And then they actually, I haven't seen them roll into it, but I've actually just seen them stop and actually smell it. 
it kind of reminds me of a buck during rut the buck always will mark a tree rub a tree it's how you can tell how big the buck is which is always good to find good sign to where you need to put your deer stand or your deer blind but sometimes they they stink pretty bad that's because they're uh their urine uh, they put their urine out on the ground and that's their mark and that's where they actually do a rub and they'll hit the trees they'll rub the trees with their antlers it's pretty interesting behavior so that's what it kind of reminds me of uh to be honest with you another typical behavior uh that i've seen is the smell or the uh the the grunling of the nose and uh the sniffing of the air or the sniffing of a female that's the typical uh thing that i've seen since he was young you even see these little calves do it you even see the uh females do it they will wrinkle up that nose and they will smell of each other kind of like a dog you know how a dog introduces themselves is they they sniff each other's rear end i know it's it's crazy we've all probably seen it kind of the same thing really uh dunbar gets up behind the girls and that's his way of uh, of knowing who's in heat there's something crazy about these animals that uh they notice that smell that certain scent that is being put out by these females and of course that draws him in he'll single that female out for three four days could be a week i haven't even seen him do it for a couple weeks maybe she's cycling or just hadn't really hit her heat yet um but then he'll breed her i haven't caught him actually breeding her Kevin, my stepdad, has actually said he's he's seen them on top of a couple of the females before. Here's our sweet favorite, mm. Eleanor. I'm out of cubes. Hey, girl. Sorry. It's a little calf. Got a niche? That's why you don't drive the truck out in the pasture. Just give me some milk. Come on, mom. Young bull. It's fun to see um, what it takes to get him attracted or how he spreads his scent, just like other animals do. And uh, I'm learning. I've never seen that behavior before of him actually peeing uh, on a bison waller and then rolling in it. Luckily, I just had my camera with me. I just fed him and got to see that. So pretty fun to watch. If you can catch those scenes, I can't spend all day with them, which I'd love to, especially during this time. This is uh, one of our young bulls. I really like the way this guy looks. This is Chaske firstborn he is our first calf ever born um, i noticed that dunbar will run these calves off they're not much competition obviously because they're so young but he will run them off because he doesn't like them being around his females but i really like this bull he's a he's a sharp looking bull he's really long i'm excited to see how he does but he'll probably have to leave the herd eventually and we can't have two adult bulls around Here's the great thing about only having one dominant bull is our fences aren't torn up we don't have a lot of we won't have a lot of fighting if you uh watch any footage from yellowstone or or custer and some of those big parks where there's lots of bison you see those bulls fighting and i know i posted something on my facebook where um this bull ran across the road and lifted up another bull now these bulls are probably about 2,000 pound bulls in, in Yellowstone picked him up and threw him on the other side of the road That is nothing but sheer strength and agility and power If that bull a dominant bull who obviously won his ladies over Lifted that other bull up and threw him on the other side of the road and said not today, sir These are my ladies and I'm gonna stick with them 
and <laughs> luckily we don't have to deal with that so that's why we only have one bull and also i've heard that one bull can breed up to 25 females cows or yearling heifers up to 25 now i think they have to be in really good health and he better be in some really good health and in good shape to be able to do that because that's a lot of work for one bull now that means you got to have good grass too um, that comes with that for good health so that bull can actually breed that many females here he's only got seven remember this breeding season runs from july could even run all the way to october i think he's got a couple of these females bred but not all of them so he may just be in a quiet time right now he may be tired it's a lot of work for this guy if a lot of these females come in heat and he's got to stick with them he's got to defend everybody else off and then hopefully get them bred breeding behavior can bring out some interesting characteristics for sure if you're in love and and you're trying to protect your woman you got to do what you got to do so if, if it takes dunbar beating the crap out of everything and and running the rest of a the bison away from his from his woman hey that's nature's way of doing it dunbar just keep doing your thing buddy you're doing a good job just make sure you get all those females bred just a couple other breeding facts once they're bred those females carry a baby from about nine to ten months the length is what i like to use is it's just about as long as a woman as a, a woman's duration of carrying a baby it takes a long time for these females to actually have a calf and then the calf actually grow up before you can sell it or raise it or keep that calf so if dunbar does his job we could have seven females bred i don't know if it'll happen i think for sure we should at least have six You guys ever seen a speckled colored bison? Looky here. Hey guys, it's Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back. These red dogs are starting to lose that red color. I want to show you the transformation that these guys are going through and how long it takes to lose that red color. I also got a lot of updates for you. I've had lots of questions here lately about some uh, certain topics going on with the Cross Timbers Bison Ranch, but I want to cover some of those with you. I've got a couple of things to do today besides talking about these calves, but one, I'm going to get rid of this. I think it's time for this to go. You guys know, Dunbar loves this is this is his toy right here this guy right here so Dunbar likes to take the the plastic part out of it which is right here every day you can see this thing is just not gonna make it this is one of the very first troughs I bought when I first started this thing has taken a beating but I'm very impressed I do like the tartar it's holding up really well so what I did was I went and bought another one and I'm gonna put it out here. But it's time for this to go. And this is what you have to do. You've gotta tie it up so he doesn't take it completely out in the pasture.
Look at the difference in color of those babies. You can see how dark this calf is. This is our first born calf. Uh, she's actually our very first heifer calf that was ever born. Mama's right here. This is Bell Star, our feisty cow now. But her baby is, I mean, she is the same color as her mama. She was born June 3rd. Our little bull was born June 17th. He's over there with Eleanor, one of our fan favorites. And then here, trying to get in the trough, is Quapaws. He was born July 1st. So you can really see the difference between 14 days apart and a month apart. That these calves are growing and their hair is changing and they're starting to molt that young coat and transitioning into young adulthood. The best way that we're going to grow this herd and the fastest way is by having heifer calves. So we want more and more heifer calves. Does it take long for a red dog season to, to disappear? So something I don't talk about very much are these little calves. And one of the questions I always get is now that I have these calves part of this herd that are from Dunbar, which is our main bull, now that we have them here, we're going to keep the heifers because as you guys know, I want to grow the herd and that's that's my main objective is to get this herd where it's capable of actually making some revenue. Guys, it takes a long time for bison. They can't reproduce until they're two. Get bred at two years old in the late summer, early fall. They carry that baby nine to ten months. They have the baby. You can't really sell that baby until if you want to sell calves at six or seven months old after you wean them. Or you let them grow up and, and you've got to get them in the market range of weight, which is at least over a thousand pounds before you want to slaughter them for meat or, or process them. So there's, there's, a, there's a process to this and it takes a long time. I'm only in year three. I started this in March 2018. So I still have a little ways to go. I have two older calves that I had last year. They're yearlings now. And I'm, I'm, about, um, I'm really close to deciding what I'm going to do with those. Uh, two bulls. We don't need more bulls in here because Dunbar is going to do the job. What am I going to do with these calves? I've got two heifers and one little bull uh, from 2020. I'm going to have to make a decision on what I'll do with the bull. I ain't worried about it now. They're only like three or four months old. But what am I going to do with these little heifers? Yes, they're going to stay in the herd. But the main question is, which I get all the time, can the sire of these calves breed back to their dad, to Dunbar. Yes, I understand a lot of you have questions about that. You question that, I, I get it, I understand. That's kind of an interesting subject. It's always been a topic in the bison industry, but it really shouldn't be that big a topic because here's why. So I want you to think about whenever they started to decline. When these bison started to decline in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and a lot of the conservationists that started realizing that the bison were disappearing, they took them and they started catching them. What did you start to see is these conservation herds. You start to see these herds where people were capturing them out in the wild, bringing them in, and they started pinning them up and started to raise them because they were trying to protect the bison. Well, what happens whenever you have 20 something bison, what do you think is going to happen? There's going to be some interbreeding. A lot of those small populations of bison had to interbreed. How do you think those herds grew over time? How do you think that they are where they are today? There had to have been some breed back. I know that's hard to understand, but I believe that's the way it is. Or you can ask a lot of bison producers, how did they get to this point? Well, when there's less than a thousand animals in the entire country in the late 1800s early 1900s they had to breed back so that they could reproduce and have the main herds and the large herds that we have today so there you go um, i hope i explained it enough and i hope i covered that because that is a question i always get do i know everything about the bison no i do not i've talked to people that have been in the bison world for a long time and they have done a lot of research on it and i've been a lot of places and i've talked to those people and I think that's a fact. So we're gonna keep those heifers and we want to 
grill this hurts. I know it seems weird, but you know what? These bison are still the amazing animals that they are and will always be. They're tough, the strong has been naturally selected over time. That process is what we have today. So they've been on the garlic for a little bit. You can see the indentions and they've been getting it pretty good. Um, and one of the things I wanted to show you, somebody asked about these little tubs. Um, there is uh, holes down in the bottom of this tub where water will drain underneath these containers so that they don't, these blocks don't sit in water. Time for you to go. Didn't survive. Also want to give you an update on this. Well, I don't really know how much attention he's been giving this thing. I think I'm gonna have to make some adjustments to it. I think I'm gonna have to lower it. I, I need to set up a trail camera to try to catch him. Now I've had a lot of good advice from you guys, um, but the feed trough that he always hits is obviously low to the ground. So that may explain why he likes to hit that and maybe not in the air. So maybe we'll try to lower it and see if that helps. Flies are still around right now, even though we have that garlic block out. I've been reusing this. I've been putting more fluid on it, but I came up with a different idea this time. I started using a different technique for our rub. This time, I'm gonna do something different. Here we go. So I think this is way better. I got a mixture here. This is a way better technique than spraying it. Jeez. There's not a drop left in there. It soaked it up quick. But this will help along with the garlic block. A little more fly prevention. Thank you guys for watching us. A lot of good updates, a lot of things happening around here. It's always fun to see those babies and, and check up on them. I know I don't talk about them a whole lot, but they are pretty cute. But it's crazy how they're born with that red hair and then it doesn't take long, three or four months, and that process starts to change and they can turn brown just like their mom and dad really fast. So pretty neat to watch that transformation. There's not a lot of animals that do that that take that transformation color like these bison do. Thank you guys. What are you doing? Hey guys, welcome back. It's Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Got something exciting going on. Even though it's super hot out here, we're getting it started. Check this out. Sheet metal's going on.
So, I told you we wouldn't run into any problems, right? Well, of course we did. What I realized was after we got started, some issues. I've got this screw here and then the self-tap screw, which is here. So the self-tap screw is uh, to what goes to the c purlin right here. It's made to go through the metal here, the sheet metal, and into the c purlin And this is this is called c purlin right here. Along the walls here. Problem was, is they only sent us one bag of these. And the, fun of the, the funny part is this is the trim color to match. The color is called clay. And then this screw looks like a wood screw. I'm like, they sent us tons of these. And so this color matches and it's an overlap screw. Notice the color here. That's what that is. It's part of the overlap. When it meets, you take a sheet, they're three foot wide. It's your overlap screw. And then here, are your self-tap screws which attach to the c purlin different color that's all we had and uh, i'm not sh sure if they thought we were screwing into a a wood building or what and they gave us tons of the wood looking screws and only one bag of the self taps so the self taps here are colored for the trim that goes on the corner and on the ridge cap at the top that was the first problem and uh this is as far as we got. We got one piece on right here. Remember, this wall is only gonna go 15 feet wide. It's a 30 foot wide barn. This is only gonna go about halfway. This is a load and unload area. So it's gonna be a straight wall. A trailer can back up right here. This gate swings open here. A trailer gate swings open that way. Because after you work an animal, if you wanna send them to a sale, you gotta work them. And we can send them out here, kind of do everything centralized from here. If you want to kick them out in the pasture after we got some new ones, you can do that. We so, got started. We kind of got in a rhythm. And then we're out of self-tap screws. I've got to call the company and figure out what the problem is. But we'll get it straight. We'll have to get these self-tap screws to match and make sure and keep going the same rhythm. But once we got started, it was pretty good. If you watched uh, part one and part two, you saw a lot of the challenges that Austin and I faced um, just building the frame. Um, I think this is part of any construction that you do, a house, um, building, or a barn, whatever it is. I think you just run in these obstacles. Uh, this is my first barn ever, and I think it's part of it, but you do it the best you can. Once I figure out the self-tap screws and the overlap screws, and you got to match the color, once I talk to the company, um, we'll start back over and we'll finish this wall. And then we will probably finish this wall here and then we're gonna start the top. Stay tuned for the uh, next time we start this. Hopefully we'll have everything together. It's day two of building this 30 by 50 barn for our bison. We're getting these sidewalls up. We're getting there. Well, that's enough for today. There's some deer. That's pretty cool. So we're done for today. We've got the north wall done. And then we have it's our 15 foot um, west wall done. We're gonna leave the other half open, getting this uh, tent on top of the roof. And I'm sure that'll be real fun. So what a process, uh, this thing, 
There's a lot more work than you think it is. We're at a stopping point here. Oh, uh -huh. so we're at a stopping point here, aren't we? Oh yeah. What'd you say? I'm down right here. Okay, I will. I'm gonna finish my video. Got a little bit to go. Probably took us uh, maybe an hour and a half to lay all of them. Once you got started, it's all about getting started. And so we'll finish all this half, then we'll come back and we'll start right here. We'll go all the way across. Baby steps though. I'll tell you what, it is hot up here, so we're taking this and uh, we're working this in pieces. I want you guys to take a look at this right here. So we're gonna start the other half today and we're gonna get the rest of this top part of the barn done. Then we're gonna come back. We're gonna finish the end of that truss. We're gonna finish the end of that truss. And then the last thing is we'll have our trim to put on. Halfway there. So Kevin is handing the 16 foot sheets, panels. He's putting them over to me up here. I'm basically the guy up top. So I'll stay up there and uh, screwing these sheet metals down. And he's down here at the bottom, handing them up to me. They're 16 foot long, so um, they're kind of they're kind of tough to handle down here on the bottom. And then I kind of have to help him pull them up, get it set, find the grooves, make sure our measurement's right, and line it up, and then start screwing them down to that C-purlin. The toughest part about putting this sheet metal up, especially on the top, is getting that first one right. Once you get that first one right, it goes pretty quick. You just got to get that first one lined up and then the rest of it will flow together pretty good. Here it is guys, the last sheet. Kevin's cutting out as you can tell, but here you're like, oh, there's a gap there. Yeah, well, a barn wasn't that square, okay, for the first time, but we have trim that fits over this and it's gonna be a clay color. So that clay, um, ridge cap is actually what it's called, not trim, I guess, but so ridge cap will fit right on this and then that'll be it as far as the top goes. Then we're going to fill in our trusses and finish our trim. That'll be it.
finally got the last sheet on the roof is done last thing just gotta add a ridge cap put our ends on the end of our trusses trim everything and we'll be done i think the the tough part is done for sure putting on this roof and being up here it's a cool view though it's a nice sunset and the bison came up at the end of the day Hey guys, it's Dusty Baker, Cross Timbers Bison. Got my baby girl with me, Brooks, today. She's gonna help me feed the bison. Got some wild hair, baby girl. Got some good stuff for you today. Eleanor, uh, one of the fan favorites. Um, she just, I went out in the pasture, I was showing a friend around. She's just so interesting. It was pretty funny. I've never seen her really do this before, but uh, it was something that she loves. She loves those cubes. But I took some cubes out there like I always do when I'm going to check the bison. And Eleanor, uh, I'll just, just wait and see what she did. Anyways, we're going to feed the bison. Um, they're hungry. And uh, whenever they hear us in the evening or they know we're around, they come up to the corral because they know it's feeding time. So uh, Brooks and I are going to feed the bison. Brooks is going to watch me feed the bison and hang out with me. We've got her strapped in, her frog. Don't we? Yeah, we do. All right, here we go. Zimmy beat. Okay. Say hey, there's Eleanor. Sweet little Eleanor. So if you guys don't know Eleanor, Eleanor was from our original herd. She's uh, our unique bison. She's very short compared to the rest of the herd. I mean, she's smaller than, there's a yearling heifer right there. And she's smaller than they are. And Eleanor is a three-year-old cow. And this yearling bull just kicked her off the feeder poor Eleanor she's so sweet she's been my most gentle the first time I even went out in the pasture at Doc Parsons place to look at the bison Eleanor was the gentle kind that's never changed so I took a friend out in the pasture Eleanor was hungry as could be and she knows what that green machine is she knows what that Polaris Ranger is that means cube time 
Hey. hey girl <laughs> so she you notice one of her horns is broke it's pulled that's because she's actually broke them before oh there's peaches pushing her off too she actually broke her left horn last time we were working them in the uh, squeeze chute she just it's how bison are sometimes it happens but he, here's part of the hierarchy system unfortunately Eleanor's towards the bottom and always has just because of her size and just her class status unfortunately even though she's sweet what are you doing what's going on here look at that calf look at that calf Poor Eleanor. Eleanor, we'll take care of you. Let's go get Eleanor some cubes. She's getting kicked around. Yeah, that's the boss right there. Qual Paul. Once everybody's done eating at all the troughs, Eleanor will come back and she'll check and make sure there's no feed inside these bunks.
Did you like feeding the bison today? <laughs> Eleanor, she is such a unique bison and uh, you just love her. I've, I've just enjoyed her from the very beginning. You could tell from the get-go how gentle she was and she's always been really sweet to us. She'll basically climb in that ATV as you saw today how close she'll get for some for some cattle cubes. You guys don't know what those are. They're three quarter inch cattle cubes, 14%. And it's just something that we give them for treats, I guess. It also helps to kind of corral them up and get their attention, which helps later on down the road when you're working them and, and doing those sort of things. It's fun to see Brooks out here with me. Can't wait till she uh, grows up. I'm enjoying everything now. I don't want her to grow up, um, but it's fun watching um, her grow up and, and be able to be out here. I can't wait for her to get a little older where she can run around. Obviously, I have to keep an eye on, on her a, little, a lot more because she can't get in there with those guys, obviously. Keep her safe is the number one thing, but it's just good to be out here and have a little family outing. We just You can just sit out here and watch these bison and, and just enjoy their presence. They're fantastic animals. They're just fun to watch and, and just soak it all in while they're up here. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Got some exciting stuff coming up. I wanna announce that there is a bison sale. We're gonna have our third annual Oklahoma Bison Association sale. This year, the past two years, it's been actually in my hometown of Sulphur. This year, it's in Perkins, Oklahoma. Perkins, uh, Perkins is right outside of Stillwater. Go Pokes, Oklahoma State. On November 14th, at the Perkins Livestock Auction Facility. Last year we had 120. I've bought animals from that sale two years in a row, if that tells you anything. So um, you never know what I can get myself into. Uh, I bought four quapaw females from that sale before. This year it's gonna be a little bit different being up in Perkins, but we're all working as a, an association to uh, get ready for that sale. So if you are interested, if you want to come see a show, come to a sale. I promise you. I've done a video on a sale before this year. I'll do it again. I'll do the best I can. I, I work that sale and also I'm watching the animals and watching the prices if I'm interested in some. But be ready for that. That sale will be November 14th. I'm going to go help work it, help work the bison and help work the sale. It's fun to be around a lot of other bison producers. Oh, look at there. If you want to come, if you're from uh, around that area or you're from Oklahoma or maybe Southern Kansas, um, you know, Western Missouri, if you're in that region, like I said, Perkins is a small town right outside of Stillwater. Don't know an exact time yet, but I just want to throw that out there. I'll be posting some stuff on Facebook about it. But if you want to come check out a show, come to a bison sale. It is really cool to watch. And plus, you can see a lot of good animals and you can learn a lot about these guys. So, and, and if you're interested, I know I have a lot of people that is interested in raising bison. If you want to get started, I can, I can help you out. If you're interested and you're serious about it, talk to me, connect with me, email me, whatever you want to do. If you're really serious and you think you're ready, if you're ready to raise the American bison, let me know. If you just want to come see what it's like, and see how it all goes down, come to the bison sale and you can just learn. You can talk to a lot of bison producers. Um, I'll talk to you and um, we can get you hooked up. By the way, about the sale, I may be selling two of my first animals. Two of my first bison, I may be selling them. I've been thinking about it a lot lately. We may sell our two young bulls. One of them's right here, this is Chaske. He was the first born bison um, on this ranch here in Sulphur, Oklahoma, part of the Cross Timbers Ranch. He was the first one born. We may sell him and Dakota's other baby. I'm thinking about it. You guys let me know what you think. Um, it'd be kind of difficult for me to, to let my first one go. Look at him right there. Pretty good little bull. We'll see. I don't know. Thank you guys for watching us. We try to put videos out every Sunday. Hit that subscribe button if you want to follow a ranch in southern Oklahoma raising the American bison. Thank you guys. Ha <laughs> ha.
Hey guys, Dusty Baker of Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back. Glad you guys are with us. Just having a nice little morning with the bison. Came to check on them and you can just come out here. I just stop, watch and listen and I could do it forever, but I can't, I got too much stuff to do. So today I'm going to try to spray some of these guys. I gotta get them up and feed them. Normally they're up in the morning, but today it's such a nice cool morning. They like those cool mornings, so they're out here grazing. I'm gonna get them up, try to get them some feed, and then what I wanna do is spray their backs. And then also, I put some loose mineral out. I'm gonna show you that process here. I put that loose mineral out first before the bison would even come because you, when you got stuff to do in the past, you get it done when they're not around because once they hear or see you, uh, here they come running. But. you think okay all right so we'll try that and see how it goes anytime the bison are away you've got to take your opportunity that they're not in here right now got our loose mineral up and uh fiona's checking it out but we're building a new corral system and so that's why we blocked them off from their actual normal feeding area i've had to block it off because when you set these posts you can't let the bison in there because the first thing they'll do is go rub on it. It's a single, you know, two and three eighths pole and uh, they'll uh, they'll go rub on it. And of course, we we want those to be nice and square and straight and not crooked. So we've had to lock them out of there for oh, it's been about a week now. Um, and then we'll keep them out of there about another week until we get this thing done. favorite right there. Hey Eleanor. Hey girl. Hey. So these are our two guys that are going to the sale in uh, less than a month. This is our firstborn one right here. You know, it's kind of tough to get rid of. These uh, these are both good little bulls, but this is part of the business that we're in. And unfortunately, don't need these guys. As part of the Oklahoma Bison Association, um, we're going to try to support that and can help support the Bison Association by selling animals there. So there you go. We're going to sell our two first yearling bulls. Some of you guys are probably wondering how much they weigh. I'm gonna say anywhere from 550 pounds to 650. That's the range they're at. I could be way off, but going off of their last weights, which was 400 and 430, I'm gonna say they're a little bit heavier since the spring. Hey, come on, you better load up. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Let's go, load up. Come on, let's go, let's go. Better get over there. You guys want some feed? Not it's cool. Here they come. Oh, okay. Really? Hey, little guys. Eleanor. Hey, girl. Oh, that wasn't very nice. 
You hungry, fellas? Gripey there. Didn't take you guys long. Calves are ready to go. Uh, come on. Come on. Feed us. Hey, Bill. All right. You guys are tired of waiting on me. All right, so now that the now that they're all eaten, now's your chance to spray. I don't think he liked that very much. He's mad at me. Dunbar just pushes everybody off the feed. What's wrong with everybody? Dunbar's mad at me. He gone. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> They're not liking that. Hey, little guys. There comes Dunbar, he's back. You still mad at me? Huh? Sorry about it. Give him a little bit more feed. Something comfortable. See, she's got a little wound there. Not sure what from. Well, that's really surprising. That's Qualpaw. She's pretty feisty. I'm surprised she let me do that. Hey, Eleanor. Come on. Come on. Come here. Right here. Hey, hey, hey. Come on. See, she's... Eleanor is too afraid. She's too afraid to come over here. Eleanor likes to rub on trees and she gets some open wounds every now and then. Hey, but she's eating. I'm good, I'm happy with that. And I'm able to spray her. A lot of, a lot of feistiness going on this morning. He's got some flies on him. If there's one that's not gonna let me spray her, it's right there, it's Dakota. That was our sick cow. Man, she looks a ton better. She's come a long way. 
She's uh she's pretty distant from me. She's not gonna let me. <sighs> that is success right there. There's a lot of people not able to do this, and you have to do uh, fly prevention in different ways. You've seen I've used the rub before. You can do all sorts of those type of rubs, but that right there, you you can't get any better than that. Direct spraying right there on the back. Now, there's a lot of big ranches out there that can't do that. Their bison won't even come up to them. You can't even get this close to bison. But there's a lot of places like mine, some smaller ranches and farms that raise bison and that get used to people and you can do stuff like this. So all we really use is Promethean. This is a, a concentrate you mix with water. It's got a little handheld sprayer here. Sucker can shoot pretty far. So just another way to prevent flies. All right, you guys see that, Eleanor's eating. And she let me spray her, which is good. Well, that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Just doing some daily things. Kevin feeds them quite a bit um, because he's here more than I am. Um, my mom and... That was not good. That one right there, Queen Bee. She, see those horns? She loves to use those horns. She will knock the tar out of some of these bison. Things, Kevin feeds them quite a bit. Um, because he's here. And that's what just happened right there. See all these guys standing around, they're like, nah, screw that. Eleanor, she's she's sneaking in there though. Okay, can I do my closing? You guys good with that? Anyways, <laughs> thank you guys for watching. Oh, this is uh this is fun stuff right here, right? We'll be able to spray them, got some mineral out. We'll see how that goes and see if they like it. They're not gonna um uh, they're not gonna eat it right now because uh they're entertained with their food so these are some, just some daily activities uh you i can spray them it would be very helpful if you could spray them once a week that would be ideal if some of you can't get that close to your bison you really can't do that if you can get on them um, once or twice a month i think that would be good don't forget about the sale november 14th is the sale it's in perkins oklahoma i've been talking to uh, some of our oklahoma bison association members Talk to Doc Parsons. I think this may be our biggest sale ever. I don't want to hype it up too much because a lot of people say that they're going to bring so many animals. Uh, we've heard about uh, some big loads of bison that are coming this way, which is great because we want a big sale and it's at the very beginning of the sale season. Custer State Park is the first one. It's always the first weekend in November. And then ours is, is, is right there after Custer State Park. Custer State Park sale you notice they had their roundup just recently they round those animals up they sort them out and then they have their annual sale that one kind of sets the bar as far as sales go and then ours follows right after it ours is obviously in northern oklahoma so you can pull a lot of uh southern herds or southern producers and uh consumers um it may be a pretty big sale for us if you're around or want to come to that november 14th in perkins oklahoma come to the oklahoma bison association sale it'll be a lot of fun also i am going to lubbock texas i announced this in my last video going to the charles addington ranch out there and i've never been out there i've been to lubbock but i've never been to charles's place i know charles through bison association stuff i'm gonna go out there with doc parsons my bison guy the bison guy I'm gonna go out there with him. I just volunteered to go out and see another ranch and asked him if I could take the camera along and try to work the bison and um, work some different bison, see uh, the Addington's ranch and see how they operate their bison. And then also try to try to get a video out there and show some other ranches around. I've thought about doing, I've talked about doing this uh, with my wife and we've talked about going around to some other ranches to try to show you guys about bison ranching and uh, how everybody does their own ranching. So I'm gonna go out to Lubbock and I'll try to put that video out as soon as I can. So um, that'll be fun and entertaining, I'm sure. I'm gonna try to bring you along 
out on a bison ranch in Lubbock, Texas. Thank you guys for watching. And if you haven't, hit that subscribe button. Follow us along. Guys, this is the American bison right here. There's no greater mammal in North America right here. Once almost extinct is right here, and we're able to take care of these guys. Sorry, Bill. Where are the cubes?
This is a scared Maya face. <laughs> She's unsure. You got Dunbar creeping in over there. She's a little nervous about it. <laughs> What's wrong, Maya? You scared of Dunbar? He won't bother you. Peaches, right here in Maya, they've never gotten along. Look at these ears. Maya's always been snipping around peaches, and peaches is not like Maya, never have. What's the problem? Well, That tastes good, big fella. Why do you keep getting into cockleburrs? Some of you don't know what's on Dunbar's forehead. It's cockleburrs. Oh, he's running somebody off. We sprayed for him this year, but he managed to find the one or two plants that are still left out here. He found a way to get into the cockleburrs. I hate those things. I thought we had them, but obviously not. Hey guys, welcome to Woolforth, Texas. It's uh, cold and windy. The temperature changed like that overnight, literally. We're here at the Addington Ranch just outside of Woolforth, Texas, which is basically West Texas. It's, uh, it's West Texas and the wind always blows out here. We're all getting ready it's early in the morning. It's, uh, it's kind of cloudy, so the sun hadn't had a chance to peek through yet. But Hopefully it'll warm up for us. If you guys don't already know, uh, I'm kind of a soft dude. Being cold, so I will bundle up. And uh, you can always tell when it's cold. Just look at my nose. It's cold. <laughs> Got a eventful day for you. I've never been out to uh, Charles's ranch. The Addington family, they're all here with a bunch of uh, loyal friends. They come out here and work these bison every year, twice a year. So. We're here to get it started, and uh, it should be a fun day.
Okay, so this is the basically the large holding area for the bison. They're out in a bigger pen. It's been staying there for, I don't know, a couple of days or so. You have to round these animals up when they're out, you know, eating on lots of acreage. I rounded them up. They spent a couple of days doing that. They brought them in. They'll be sorted out into much smaller and that all these bison will get worked. Guys, it's been four months since they've had rain out here in West Texas and that is hard on these animals. That's hard on the families. That's hard on any farmer that's out here. And unfortunately, this is part of it out here. It's already dry and then when you don't get rain for four months, it's tough. bison have been through the system before you can tell they know the routine that they're taking so this is the holding area that they're in they're gonna be ran through okay, basically gonna come right down this lane and they're gonna end up here in what you call the tub out of the tub out of the squeeze chute Come on! But dirt. Ah, wind's blowing out of here. This is an interesting part. So this is a roundup, and what I love about this is Robert. He's over there on that horse, good old fashioned, um, riding a horse out here on the wild, wild west, Wolferth, Texas. This is the interesting part is going out there to the holding, big holding lot, rounding them up. We've got some runners out there too. There's, there's a couple guys out there on, on feet pushing these bison. My wife saw me in there. She would absolutely upset at me if she saw me in there running, trying to scare these bison into this uh, big alley here. So I run them out of there, push them down. Here they come. Charles is there in a skid steer with a big gate on the front. 
So I'll come down here, and it's my job to hop over here and shut this gate. Well, a whole lot of dust and a whole lot of wind later, we've got all the bison taken care of. What a day of learning, a lot of things just paying attention to that I can pick up and use at my place. Now, a lot more bison here than my place, obviously. I mean, there's, there's over a hundred animals here. And he even has a ranch in Oklahoma, southeastern Oklahoma, Holdenville. And there's over 200 animals there. So got a lot of bison, which is, a, which is awesome. It's always fun to see those big bulls, but a lot of good bison. Charles takes care of his bison here and does a good job and really cares about them. May have to take a trip to Holdenville to see that herd and see that process there. And uh, most of the same people work at Holdenville too, but a lot of learning out here. This is way different out here, far west Texas. You're dealing with different conditions. You're dealing with um, different facilities, different equipment, different animals, and it's just a great experience. All right, guys, that's a wrap for today. I hope you enjoyed it, getting to see a different ranch, different place. I love it. I love the experience. It's crazy. What a hard day of working. These are awesome people out here that work hard with the conditions that they have. They take care of these bison. It's because they love and care about them. And uh, if you love bison and care about them, they'll love and respect you back. And uh, that's what's awesome about these animals. They're great animals. So thank you guys for watching us. Thank you guys for watching me. I'm part of the Addington Ranch in Woolforth, Texas. Check them out. You can check them out on Facebook. He sells good bison. He also sells meat. You guys check him out. It's Addington Buffalo Company in Woolforth, Texas, out here just southwest of Lubbock. Check him out. Charles Addington, Addington Buffalo Company. Thank you for watching. If you haven't, subscribe to me right now, guys. This is about the American bison. That's what this channel is about, and I hope you enjoy it. This is America's Mammal.
Hey guys, Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back. Thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. You're gonna wanna watch this, I promise. You're gonna wanna see what we do here raising the American Bison. Hit that subscribe button. Check this out, it's one of my favorite things to do. Put out the first bale of hay of the season. I'm gonna put two out today. We've got 13 total bison, three calves. They don't need a lot of hay, but those 10 yearling and adults, they can put hay away. We have harvested our own hay here on our property. And we've also got some from uh, Daniel from Arms Family Homestead off of his property as well. He doesn't have as many big animals to feed as we do. So we're good on hay bales this year. The bison love it because it's something that they can hit on. You wanna talk about Dunbar having a toy? I promise you, right here, he will hit this. They all love hitting these hay bales. They'll attack them. They'll do whatever it is. They, it's just like, it's a kid in the candy store. I promise these bison love getting a fresh bale of hay, their first bale of hay of the right. year. We're gonna go out in the pasture, see what the bison are doing, set it out and see what they do. Here we go.
if there's a bison that always tests the gate and knows when they're open and hits peaches, I had to stop the tractor here because I've got a gate open. See, I should. Whoa, that was trying to open on me. Wind's blowing. You should keep them out into another pin to block them off, but they beat me to the punch. They heard the tractor and uh, they know what season it is. So Peaches is sitting here waiting on me to make a mistake so uh, she can squeeze out of here. Dunbar. It's amazing how dark these bison look when they're wet. See, Dunbar is a blacker color of wool. I think most of his babies are coming out black as well. He's already naturally a, a darker color of a bison, but anytime these bison are wet, they look even darker. So I actually put out two bales of hay. Got one right here. This one, this one was big. And then we have the one that you saw me just put out. But, but what was funny is I, I didn't catch it all, but because they were in another pasture. But when they saw the tractor and they saw me come through the gate, they were out here running around like crazy because they know what that tractor is inside the pasture. If they know it's good news. So it's good to get these hay bales out. Unfortunately, this grass will start and going into dormant. This is Bermuda. Some of you are like, well, that's still green. Yes, it is still green. And they'll keep grazing on it, but it's going to be nasty for a couple of days. It's cold and wet. You can tell I'm actually pretty chilly, but it's a toy at first. And they, what's, what's crazy is uh, if you notice about these, these hay bales, you look and you say, well, that's not a very good looking hay bale. Well, in southern Oklahoma, guys, or in the south, where we get a lot of moisture, a lot of these hay bales, and if you don't put them inside the barn, they kind of develop this outside dead look. And that's fine, because here's what the bison do. And, it, and what you just saw is the bison will beat this exterior out, and underneath it is the good stuff. Yeah, so underneath there will be the good hay and you can tell what they're eating right now on the other bale of hay. They've already destroyed it and uh, Dunbar mainly destroyed it. They'll munch on that for probably two weeks or so and then we'll have to put another bale out depending on the weather, depending on the grass, but this freeze should get this grass and then we'll go into our uh, winter season putting out hay. Hope you guys enjoyed also watching me out in West Texas with the Addington family. What a great experience. He has such a nice setup. I know every time that they work those bison, they're always trying to improve. They're trying to be safer. It was a safe and smooth. No bison got hurt. No body got hurt. It was awesome. And it was, uh, I wish, I wish we could go through that actually well we've always been safe but it's just how smooth the, the transition was with those bison i had a lot of fun and the addington family are good people and uh, i had fun working with those guys and and i'd love to do it again sometime thank you again to the addington family and i hope you guys enjoyed watching me going to another ranch i may try to keep doing this you guys let me know what you think I'd love to keep going and visiting some ranches just to see how they do things, uh, see how they operate. 
and uh, just just give you another uh, view of another ranch besides mine. You know, here in southern Oklahoma, we got 13. We started out with five. And so we're growing, starting from the bottom up. And if you guys are interested in wanting me to travel around to see other bison ranches, let me know. Also, sales coming up November 14th, Perkins, Oklahoma, a show and a sale. Uh, we've got a judge coming from Texas. And we'll, I think we're gonna have quite a few animals there. I'm gonna sell my first two, so be looking for that. Thank you guys for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you wanna follow a small bison ranch in Southern Oklahoma raising the American Bison, guys. You can follow us on Facebook. You can follow us on Instagram. Thank you, guys. Hey guys, it's Dusty Baker with Cross Summers Bison. Welcome back. Today, we're on a little family field trip, a little fun day. We're going to Enid, Oklahoma to grow the herd. The herd's gonna get a lot bigger today, isn't it, Brooks? When I say a lot bigger, I cannot wait to show you guys what I mean by that. When I say bigger, it's, it's big. <laughs> Brooks, you gonna get some more of these? Huh? You ready to go? Okay, so we are on the way to Enid. Got the family with, got the wife, and got baby Brooks. And so we're traveling to pick up some bison. I had a guy contact me, really nice guy. He's got a big farm up here in Carrier, Oklahoma, actually. He reached out to me came across on YouTube and uh, he reached out to me and we talked and he said he's got some bison that he uh, wanted to sell to me and so uh, my wife and I and Brooks we loaded up and we went to Enid and we went to see him checked him out and uh, hung out with him and his wife and had a good visit and so we're back uh, about three weeks later and the herd grows quickly and uh, it's just one of the situations that uh, we had offered to us and that we thought was a good opportunity. Uh, I know I've always said that uh, we don't need another bull, uh, but we've, we're gonna make some adjustments uh, to the farm. We're gonna have to build some more fits and we are uh, gonna bring another bull home. So really excited about this bull. One thing that I really like about these people, or these bison, is because of the people, the people that have raised them, this older couple, they, uh, they've they treated them just like I have. Uh, a lot of hands-on with these bison, feeding them cubes out of their hand, feeding them supplement feed when they need to. So they're very used to humans, which is very good for us. If, if these bison came out of a huge ranch or a big park on thousands of acres, it wouldn't work because they would be a little bit crazy. So having them people there, hand feeding them up close and personal helps us a ton. That's the only reason that we're doing this. Plus, they're really nice bison. Can't wait for you to see this bull. Dunbar has got some competition. He's not gonna be very happy, but we're not gonna have to worry about uh, the competition necessarily because we can't put them in the same pen together, which is what I've always said not to do if you've got you know only a dozen or so females or a small herd don't put two bulls together because they'll tear your fence up well we've got some work to do but we're going to create basically two herds which is what i'm excited about um, so we'll have two bulls and basically two herds we still got a lot of work to do and we've got a lot of thinking ahead of us but taking advantage of a good opportunity um, working with some really good people and get some good bison
Ah, Big Joe's loaded. Took us about an hour and a half to get him to turn around and go forward. He's not wanting to leave Carrier, Oklahoma, but he's in there. He's got some space now. We're gonna put the two cows here in the back. Now, Doug put them in this trailer here. Get them ready. So when I got here, now I've got him in the front, give him some space and some room. Put the two cows in the back and we'll be set. Time to go home. Hey, big boy. All right, we're about to hit I-35 and head home with these bison. So excited to get them back on the ground, and I know that they're excited to get back on the ground as well. They're tired of being worked and being in a trailer. Look at that sucker right there, guys. Look at him. He is a beast. He was pretty calm today, and he worked well. It took a long time to just get him turned around. He did not want to turn around at all. He wanted to stay home where he's been forever. These bison have been in the trailer maybe once, ever. Thank you guys for watching. To be continued when we get home to Sulphur to the Cross Timbers Bison Ranch. We appreciate you following us. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. We got a lot of fun stuff happening at the farm. Sale is coming up. Taking our two yearling bulls to Perkins, Oklahoma and gonna sell our first two bison there at the sale November 14th. Thank you guys for watching and stay tuned when we bring these bison to their new home. You guys meet Big Joe. Who says bison can't be in the big city? Hey, big guy. So Bison's first time to the big Oklahoma City. In case you guys are wondering what this is, the guy who I bought the Bison from also gave me this panel to use as a pusher. And someday we'll be able to use this. They used it in West Texas. They put it on the front of a tractor and uh, push the Bison when you're working. Worked great. home had a good day with marissa and baby girl we're home see the new lot on the barn the new lots in the barn coming in real handy it's time to get these bison unloaded here got to get this this pusher off the back or this panel off the back that uh, the gentleman gave to me so i'm going to get this off and we're going to back up here to the corner and they're going to run through here and we'll get them unloaded Hey, did you just wake up? Huh? Been a good girl. Yeah, hey, I got mine. Let me get mine and hop over there. Ready, open
Hey guys, it's Dusty Baker with Customers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. I wanted to introduce the new three members of the Cross Timbers Bison herd right here. Of course, the highlight of them all, as you saw in my last video, is Big Joe. Big Joe, we're, one of the reasons that we went after these animals when we had the opportunity we did is to how gentle they were. You can tell how, how, how nice Joe is and how calm they are when we brought them home. Of course, they're a little stirred up. We brought them home at night. I didn't want to bring them home at night, but it was uh, we had a long day. Of course, Big Joe here didn't want to leave Carrier, Oklahoma, uh, but we finally got him loaded up. You, you really don't want to push these animals too much, but we were able to get him loaded up uh, to bring him home, and uh, we finally got him. But we made it safe, and we got home, and everything was great, and we let him out. So. Big Joe, so far, doing great. He flipped over a couple of water troughs, so I had to update and get a bigger water trough. But Joe's doing good. And he already loves his cubes already. He is a big guy. So let me introduce you to the rest of the herd. Here, I'm just going off the names. I don't think we should change them from the original owners. This is Kit. She's kind of feisty. She's the feisty one of, of, of the three. She's uh, kind of reminds me of Bell Star, or she kind of reminds me of Quapaw, maybe the queen bee of this group. But this is Kit. She's shaking her head at me. She's five and a half years old. And then you have Flo here. She's kind of like the Eleanor. Of the group she's she's pretty nice she's pretty gentle and that's uh that's good to have a uh, one uh, a bison like like uh, Eleanor these cows Flo and Kit they've also produced uh, I think they've had three calves so that kind of gives you the age they're five and a half so they've been bred every year that they've been able to be bred remember bison can't breed until they're two years old so they've had at least three babies which is awesome and so we're just gonna try to keep that going so big joe here pretty gentle big old guy which is good that's what we want here we don't want a bunch of crazy animals because that's what uh, can happen whenever you buy them from different places but luckily these people um, did what I'm doing right now. They did a lot of hand feeding them. They spent a lot of time with them and uh, that helps us out. Now the bad part about Big Joe and Kit and Flo is they've never been through a squeeze chute. So this year will be the first year that they'll run through a squeeze chute and it should be pretty interesting needless to say considering they've never been in a squeeze chute. Our, uh, this is just a little tip for uh, bison beginners, is whenever you bring new animals home, no matter where they're from, we're lucky here because these animals have had um, a couple around them, it had some people around them almost every single day. And the bison get used to that. And so that's a big deal to us. You know, if you get bison from maybe Yellowstone or Custer State Park, big places like that, where they hardly ever see people, um, or on these big ranches, you could run into some problems because these animals, they're wild and they're crazy. But if you've got some that are used to people, that's a, that's a good start. Know where your bison are coming from. If you go to the sale or go visit a bison ranch and you because you're looking at buying some look at their body language and you can tell real quick if they're kind of crazy or not bison all have a little crazy in them but you can see here how calm these guys are and since we brought them home how calm they were number two tip is bring them in here and don't just throw them out in your pasture don't just put them out there and let them go because they're going to test you they're going to test every corner of your property and they're going to there's chances that they could run through your fence depending on how crazy they are i don't think these three would run through a fence but i do know that 
um, because these animals were handled for a while, an easy transition, hopefully. Bring them home and put them in your corral. I've had a lot of bison producers reach out to me um, talking about putting bison or buying bison, but they don't have a corral system. Guys, you gotta have a corral system. You gotta have something nice, heavy, and sturdy. Now this is brand new. We have a six foot top rail here. And then we bought these pre-made panels like we used on this side. If you watch one of my videos, I showed you how we put those together. Hey. And we have a six bar panel here. It's probably a, a foot off the ground. I mean, this is tough, even for this giant bull here. Look out, a little skittish still. Even for this giant bull, you still got these panels and he's not getting through it and he's not getting over it. So when you bring these animals home, put them somewhere safe where if they are a little crazy and they can come somewhere where you're not having to worry about their fencing, you can put them in something like this and it'll be great. Let them get habituated. Let them establish a new environment, a new system, new bison, a new place. Let them get used to it. And you can do that by just putting them in your corral. So what's our next step with these bison? Guys, what we're gonna do is because we have two bulls on this property, here's the other herd. They're wanting some cubes too. They're a little jealous right now. Because we have two bulls, we can't have them touching noses from fence to fence. So if Dunbar was here, as long as they're able to touch noses, I don't think Dunbar would go through this, but they would test each other. Now, if you've got them on some barbed wire fence and you've got Dunbar on one side and Big Joe on the other, you're gonna have some issues, especially during breeding season. One of the things is we have our herd and we have a herd of a size 13 right now, but that's not really big enough uh, to have two bulls. If we had a 25 or 30 or even 40 breeding females, we could have two bulls on a bigger place, but we don't really have that availability right now. And we don't have that many breeding females. So we're just gonna keep them separated. But here's the good thing is we've got another breeding bull now. And so that what we can do is take some of our original herd, our large herd, new babies, the new calves, or some heifers, and we can switch off and see what Big Joe can do with them. So Big Joe will have some opportunities to, to have some new women. He's had Kit and Flo for a while now, but at some time, uh, Joe will have an opportunity to breed some new females. Hey, big dog. Dunbar, he's a, he's wondering what's going on. He's come up to the fence right here. This is part of our new corral system. Dunbar's came up there and checked it out. And a lot of you guys are probably asking about him. See how he's doing. He's uh, he's doing pretty good. We're not getting rid of Dunbar, I promise you. Dunbar is gonna be our guy still. So, so if you guys are wondering, Dunbar is three and a half years old. He is not as big as Big Joe right there. Dunbar is, like I said, is only three and a half years old. And uh, he still has a ways to go. That he can reach uh, full maturity at five to six years old. And so that's kind of where we're at with, with Dunbar. He's a bit of a darker bison, which we like that about him. <clears throat> We're not changing anything with Dunbar. He's always gonna be here with us. So this is part of our new corral system that we built. We have, this is our one of our long stretches. We built this fence back in the spring and then we finally finished it here all the way down. So when we brought the three new ones home, we put them right here in this holding area. And so there's a gap here in between where the rest of the, the herd is. We just don't want them touching noses because we, we could face some issues with them touching noses.
<laughs> You're still the boss, aren't you? Yeah. So I know a lot of you ask, what are we gonna do with these three? We're not gonna really change a whole lot. We're gonna keep these in here together for a while. And what we're gonna do is do some fence building. We gotta do a little bit of work on the property as far as the vision of uh, some fence lines or some pastures that we're gonna divide up and get ready for pasture rotations, which has been one of my goals. What we're gonna try to do is we're gonna divide some pastures up so that once these guys have really established their new home, we will get them on some grass. Uh, that's important to us. The grass is going into uh, dormant right now. Kevin already had them a bale of hay ready um, before they even got home, which is awesome. We appreciate Kevin doing that, make them feel at home as soon as they got here. Right now, we just wanna make sure that they're healthy and that they're feeling at home, which I think everything is going pretty well right now. And they're feeling at home, they're fed, and they're watered and that's what they want they want to just keep them happy guys you, you you love and care for these animals and uh, they'll respect you back and they know it so really excited about big joe and flo and kit to join the new herd and we'll we'll do some breeding talks later about what we're going to do with big joe and dunbar as well so anyways hope you guys enjoyed the video and I uh, just wanted to give you an update on the new additions to the herd. Got some exciting stuff still happening. I'm gonna sell my first two yearling bulls at the sale and Perkins at the Oklahoma Bison Association sale. And we'll see how that goes. And I'm gonna bring you along on that journey as well. So stay tuned for some upcoming videos of me actually putting my first two bison in the sale for me to ever sell bison. And then also the sale process. I've done a sale process before of our sale a couple years ago. This year I want to do another video over the sale process. We're at a different facility up in Perkins, Oklahoma. So if you're a new beginner, number one, have a good corral system so you can actually work your animals. Have something that when you bring new animals home that are maybe not like these calmer bison or if you bring them home no matter what, have something you can work them have a place that you can bring them home and let them habituate to their new environment and to their new home number two don't just let them out in the pasture put them in something like this so they can slowly adapt to your new system the new smells and all those things that the bison have to get used to thank you guys for watching thank you for uh watching this whole story and this process of cross timbers bison guys it's been a fun adventure um, been doing this for three years been on YouTube for over a year now and it's been a lot of fun and uh, I really enjoy bringing you guys along um, raising the American bison you can follow us on Facebook you can follow us on Instagram I'll keep you updated on Big Joe and his two ladies and still the rest of the herd and be uh, be watching for the uh, videos from the sale up in Perkins Oklahoma thank you guys for watching Nobody's forgot about you, I promise, big guy. We still love you. Promise. Hey guys, I also want to thank Alvar and Gula. I want to thank him for letting me borrow his trailer. Um, anytime I need to borrow equipment, he lets me borrow his equipment. And he let me use his um, nice trailer to go get these bison up in Enid. Gula Farms. This guy's been raising goats. He's been doing it a long time for a lot of people did around my area. Great guy, great family. Very appreciative. Thank you, Alvar and Gula, for letting me use your trailer.
Now that we've got all the bison worked, we've got them pinned up and certain pins, according to their age, is how we pin them up. It starts with the oldest bulls, five-year-old bulls, and it comes all the way down to calves. Now is also a good time to come in and look at all the animals. If you're around the day before the sale, you can come and take a look at these animals, kind of pick out what you want, get an idea of the animals. And then tomorrow before the sale starts, you can come again, there's a window. It's from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. And then the sale usually starts about 11. Some of you are wondering what these yellow tags are. It's called a back tag. And it's just a temporary tag that's stuck to them with some glue. It's just the number of the animal for the sale. Well, hey guys, that's a wrap for today. A long day working these bison people coming in and out. I saw a lot of new faces and I saw a lot of good bison here. Um, I think there is a lot of good bison here. We've got roughly right at pretty close to 100 and uh, I'm really excited about the sale tomorrow. It's, uh, it's fun to sit here and work these shoots with Doc with his really fancy hydraulic squeeze chute. That sucker is nice. You get to see all the animals as they come in. You get to talk to the producers as they come in and, and, and socialize with them as well. So I enjoy that part of it. But tonight we're going to have a, a banquet dinner like we do every year. Uh, we'll have a little meeting with the members and we'll just socialize and have a good time and eat a good dinner together. And then tomorrow, Soul Barn will open up and you can come look at all the animals, pick out which one that you want, pick out which ones you want maybe, and then the sale will hopefully start at 11 o'clock and then it'll be on from there. Our two yearling bulls did great. They unloaded really easy and uh, they're pretty calm in these pens. Some of these bison are a little crazy and some when you coop them up in these pens, obviously, especially in big groups, but uh, the two yearling bulls, are doing really well and and i've uh, got them some hay and some water so well i'm anxious to see how they do tomorrow in the sale all right stay tuned guys So my job got a couple of buddies with me and uh we are sorting them out here and then we're we're the last people they see before they hit the ring they'll run through this alley and they'll run through here and they'll go right straight to the sale barn right there and uh that's where they'll be auctioned off so um we've already got males and females sorted both sides and then we're just letting them out basically and to send them all the way down to the ring.
young fellas are ready to be sold. Going to a new home. Had a good time with you guys, good bulls. You'll be missed. Cross Henry's license. Cherokee's met. The year and bull. Weigh 615, 660. <laughs> Sales over, so now it's time to get all these bison loaded. So we've got the new buyers pull up and uh, we load them up on the trailers. This is a uh, this can be fun and interesting trying to get them loaded up on somebody's trailer, especially being worked for a day or two and being in these pens for a while. So, um, but they're all going to go to their new homes now. So my two yearling bulls find a new home and i hope they enjoy it and hope they do a good job for for the new owners i got to see them go through there i want to say they sold for one thousand and one hundred and fifty dollars a piece which is awesome it's a good start just learning new things to sell my first two animals and uh you hate to see them go but that's part of it We're just getting these loaded one by one, trailer by trailer. We're getting these animals loaded. It takes a little while. Buyers have a day to come get their bison. They have to get them picked up by tomorrow and loaded up and take them to their new home. So we're just doing that right now. We're about to wrap this thing up. So it'll be good and I can go home and see, uh, see my wife and baby Brooks. Hey guys, that's it. Another successful sale with the Oklahoma Bison Association. And the first time I've sold any animals, part of the Cross Timbers Bison Ranch. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed another video of a sale and kind of see the process of it. It's fun. You get to meet and talk to a lot of new producers and buyers. And um, it's fun to get to see all these different bison and uh, talk to people and see how they do things. It's just a it's a good time to get together too and um, sell, sell these uh, awesome animals. So all went great and it was good to get rid of uh, two yearling bulls. I really enjoy raising those guys and I hope they do well for other people. You guys stay tuned with me. I'll keep you updated uh, with the new members and Big Joe is a big good looking self. You guys can follow us on Instagram. You can follow us on Facebook and thank you for watching Cross Timbers Bison. Looky there, two babies. Finally, our first two baby calves. Hey guys, it's Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. 
Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the Oklahoma bison sale up in Perkins, Oklahoma. It went really good. We loved the facility and there was there was a lot of good animals there and it was probably one of the biggest crowds that we've had. That sale is actually one of the only public sales that's going around this year. It's one of the only public sales, live sales that you can actually attend. A lot of the sales this year and coming in 2021 will all be online. So a lot of people take advantage of that. It's you actually show up at the sale, look at the animals and purchase them. Um, because anytime that you buy animals online, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, but with everything going on in our country, in the world, it's uh, a lot of people are doing the online bison sales. There for a minute, we had 16 bison. That was the biggest herd I've ever had. But now we're just down to 14, uh, which is which is good and growing because we got three of these that joined the herd here about a month ago. So I wanted to share something with you guys. My mom and Kevin, my stepdad, they were actually putting out hay for me. I'd been busy at the cabins and actually traveled to another bison ranch to work bison and I was busy with the sale. Um, so been a little busy so my mom and Kevin came out and they they fed the bison some hay. Well they brought um, a round bell into Joe and his two ladies to Kit and Flo. Man I wish I could have been here because anytime you put a bell of hay out, uh, a round bell of hay out, you never know what you're gonna get and Unfortunately, I missed it. Now they got to see the show. Now I thought Dunbar, my other bull, my three-year-old bull could really destroy a hay bale. I was wrong. I was really wrong. I've never seen a bison destroy a hay bale like Big Joe did. Uh, the word big really came into play with this guy because he pushed the round bale. Now these things can weigh about a thousand pounds and uh joe pushed it around like it was like it was a little ball and he pushed it first of all he, he hit it while it was on the tractor and then he actually rolls it out after it's torn into a, a about a third of its size rolls it around and then eventually knocks it into the water trough actually even at some point has put a hole in the trough because he's been hey flo because he's been uh, a little uh a little antsy probably ready to get out hey big guy ready to get out of their holding pen they've been in here for about uh two or three weeks now um we're gonna we're still doing some fence projects and we're we're gonna let them out eventually where you can actually get some grass but we're giving them plenty of hay and we're supplement feeding them right now because we don't want to get Dunbar and Big Joe really close together. That's why it's important when you are putting hay out make sure you always have the camera especially with these bulls because it is you never know what you're going to get it's just a giant toy to them um and then obviously some feed too but which is the main thing but i want you to take a look here in this lot there's hay all the way around here and they already had a bale of hay we've already given them i think one and they started to eat it down but this is the remnants left over from uh joe's uh debacle of destroying a bell of hay and i know a lot of you are saying well golly that's a lot of hay wasted you're right it is a lot of hay wasted we want them to be happy and play and be able to do that that's really good for them to be able uh to play with that round bell of hay and show some of that aggression you know i'm sure he, he likes um showing that aggression with dunbar just i don't know probably 70 yards away from him so you know he's got to be a big dog which he is he is the big dog on campus now is what i like to say but yes a lot of this hay unfortunately is wasted uh it's good for him to lay down on it especially on a day like this where it's kind of crummy and cold and wet 
they'll use it for um, you know a thermal bed or whatever you want to call it we may have to get some hay rings um, and go from there and see if that works that way when we put it in here he won't uh, maybe destroy it as bad so that it can eat most of that round bale and not turn it into a toy or to um, a bed like this situation here uh, I wish I could have been here to catch it, but mom and Kevin caught it and so that was pretty fun for them and my mom filmed it So thanks to them Take a look at this clip right here. It's pretty funny You gotta get in the water. But you can see how strong these animals are, especially a bull like Big Joe. You, can, you cannot underestimate the strength and agility and power and athleticism of these animals because they will surprise you in a heartbeat. And when you put a thousand pound bell out here and he hits it and rattles the tractor, that's serious stuff and then he knocks it apart and, and it explodes within a couple of minutes and then the next thing you know is he's rolling it around guys that's that is very powerful and very strong um but it's amazing what these animals can do over here dunbar a lot of you may be wondering how's dunbar handling this situation well He's been doing okay. Uh, they both kind of grunted and, and blown at each other, showing some of that aggression, obviously, what Big Joe's doing. But what Dunbar has been doing is when Joe starts doing stuff like that, he paces the fence. I've got a little footage of him pacing the fence back and forth. It's probably about, I don't know, 80 yards away, and he's making these little strut sounds with his breathing and he's uh he's i think he's just letting big joe know he's here
but I don't, guys, if these two ever locked up or I put them together, it would not be good, I promise you. I think Big Joe, at the age he's at, he could, he could um, really get after Dunbar. I don't want to ever see that, and I hope that I don't ever see it, because um, when two bulls, two bison bulls go at it, uh, you could have some serious damage, not only to your equipment, but to each other of those bulls. They can get pretty, pretty hurt. And in this situation, if Big Joe and Dunbar ever did lock up, it could be bad and Dunbar could be seriously hurt. And then we would be down another bull and we just don't want to lose Dunbar. He's a, he's one of our favorites. And I know you guys wouldn't want Dunbar to get hurt, so we're gonna do our best to create these two herds and not ever let Dunbar and Big Joe together. <laughs> that didn't work out very well. Oh, what about flow? That didn't work out very well for uh for Kit. <laughs> she got in my way. Hey guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Get an update on the entire bison family and the bison herd. Right here, we got our new head gate. It's not up yet intact. Stay tuned for that. We're gonna put our new head gate on and attach our crash gate to it. And we're gonna do a couple different things this year. We're gonna use, use some black netting to try to um, black out or try to cover up some vision le left and right for the bison um, as we work them this year. Kind of like our tub here, you can see it's sheeted. That's because when you work bison, you don't want them to see anything left and right. You always want them to go straight um, and, th and they can you know try to get through stuff you know, if they see that light. So we're gonna do some new stuff this year. I got some blackout netting here, some fencing that I'm gonna put here in the holding area, part of our corral. And then they'll run through the tub and they'll come out here in the new head gate and the squeeze chute. So stay tuned for that as we've got some upgrades. We've got some new things we're gonna try because here in a couple weeks, we're gonna work our bison for our fall handling and they'll get their fall vaccinations uh, when I say working, that's what I mean. Uh, we actually have to bring them up, put them in the pens, sort them out, and then run them through the squeeze chute. And this is where we're also going to pull off our calves. We've got three calves. We've got two heifers and one bull. We'll pull those calves off and they'll start the weaning process here in our new holding pens and our new corral system. They'll do that. And then uh, also, this will be the very first time that Joe, Flo, and Kit... The new three members of the Cross Timbers Bison Herd will be worked. They've never been through a squeeze chute. And uh, you're going, well, how are they looking so good or how are they doing so well? Well, guys, they had really good owners that handled them every day. They sprayed them for flies using a pump sprayer. They also use safeguard pellets. You can use safeguard pellets for wormers. Um, and that's another way to, instead of vaccinations through wormer or uh, the oral way of worming cattle or bison or any type of livestock. You can also use these pellets that Safeguard makes um, for worming. They they ate those and that's good. And that's why those, those bison have been taken care of, those three new ones. But this is the first time we're gonna run them through the squeeze chute and get their first set of vaccinations um, for the fall. And we'll be working our bison here pretty soon, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned, you can follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, hit that subscribe button. Guys, you can follow a bison farm in southern Oklahoma raising the American bison. Thank you, guys.
Hey guys, welcome back to Cross Timmers Bison. You got baby girl with me today. Mom's working, so we're hanging out. Been running some errands. We went to the lumber store. We went to the feed store to fill up the feed bin. And now we're coming to check on the bison. Brooks likes to check on the bison. Look at Big Joe. Oh man. Big, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he's pretty. Hey, gripey. Big Joe's already destroyed another hay bale. Oh. Huh, hey. We've dropped off the feed bin. We're gonna unhook it uh, so the bison have some feed. And then we uh, we may put out some new mineral blocks. We may put out some, uh, actually tubs is what they're called. They're called, it's cattle candy. Um, the brand is called Sweet Pro. And we got them at DNH Cattle Company uh, out of Dixon, Oklahoma. These guys raise bucking bulls. Yes, bucking bulls. And a lot of their bucking bulls are on the PBR circuit and it's pretty awesome um pretty neat it's not far it's probably 20 minutes from our cross timbers bison ranch here uh, they raise a lot of bucking bulls they've done it for a long time neat place uh, just to see all those unique bulls um, which can be very similar to bison as you know and as you watch some of my videos but we got the mineral tubs from them they've got a variety of them and uh, Doc Parsons suggested it and he wanted some so I got him some and I got me some to try on our bison. It's kind of like feed and it's kind of like a, a minerals. It's an in-between and we're going to give it to the entire herds. We got herds now. Remember we got Big Joe and his ladies and then we have my original herd. We're going to give uh, give that to them and um, see how it goes and see if they like it. Do you think they'll like it? You got food on your face. <laughs> hmm? That right there is always a good sign. Full of our four way blend.
also probably wondered why are you pulling the pallet with the tub with the ATV. Well, front front end loader, the tractor's been having some issues. So uh, I went ahead and switched over to do this. Sometimes you just gotta, whoa. Sometimes you just gotta switch things up to make it happen. So anyways, we got our tub out here for the main herd. You guys probably recognize this area. This is our concrete uh, pad that was already here. Um, and there are the bison out here and the roaming around the big pasture. I'm anxious to see how they uh, use this um, and what they do to it, but I like this concrete pad. I used it this summer uh, where we put our big green feeder at. You're supposed to keep these close to water and where you feed your animals. That's what you're supposed to do. So got some poop on it, but uh, it's got a, it's got some interesting stuff about it. I'm anxious to see how the bison respond to it. It uh, Hopefully it's a good product. It's more kind of like a food and then just a mineral. It's supposed to take two weeks to adapt. They call it an adaptation period. Um, and then after two weeks, the recommended rate is of intake is 0.75, one pound and a quarter, a pound and a quarter a day per head can go through this. We'll give it a couple weeks and see how they respond to it. Big Joe, all he did was just flip his over. So. Uh, that's how we started with them, but we'll see what or if Dunbar decides to do anything All right, I'm gonna get out of the way and see what they think about this Peaches. <laughs> you guys can tell when we're cold. Our noses get red, huh? Yeah, you can definitely tell. <laughs> Had a good time with Brooks out here. His left arm is really getting heavy. I promise you after a while that, that arm gets heavy. <laughs> but it's fun to have Brooks out here and do some stuff and give mom a break and so we can get some stuff done. It definitely can be a challenge for sure, right? Any of you have had kids and worked on a farm or done anything with having kids, but you know it can be tough to get stuff done. But sometimes you just got to bring them along, huh, babe? That's right. But I think she likes being with dad, so, um, and I like having her around. So someday you'll be big enough to do this stuff, right? That'll be fun. You guys can follow us on Instagram. You can follow us on Facebook. Hit that subscribe button, guys. Follow a small bison ranch in Southern Oklahoma raising the American bison.
Time to get up and add some spice to your life. Cross Timbers Bison Jerky. Now, and Jalapeno Cheddar Sticks. Get you some before it's gone. Hey guys, this is Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome to Checking on the Herd. Well, you were way too close to me. So, I am uh, hanging out with the bison in the pasture. I've got their favorite treats. This is Bell Star right here. Kind of feisty. I don't like her being this close to me. I have to back them up a little bit. There's the fan favorite, Eleanor. She's getting shoved off already. Thank you, thank you, yes. Got a birthday around the corner. Thank you, Robert. Yep, thank you for the birthday. Thank you for get thank you guys for the happy birthdays. Appreciate it. Hey, Chloe McDowell, <laughs> one of my former students. Hey, thank you guys for the happy birthdays. Appreciate it. That we had we had a good time. My wife threw me a surprise birthday uh, party uh, last night. Um, we we're out working on the farm, hanging out, checking the bison, and had Brooks with us. And um, then um, went over to Daniel and DJ's, and uh, all my friends were there, and all of our Family friend was there, and we had a we had a good time. So thanks to my wife and my sister and Daniel and family for throwing me a surprise birthday party. So thank you guys. We had a good time. Thanks to my my wife. She's sneaky. Appreciate it. So what I want to do is um, I just kind of want to announce some things. I've got some good things coming up here pretty soon. Let me throw some feet out to these bison and get them occupied. Kind of get them away from me. Here's Dunbar. Oh, he's busy. So what I want to do is announce a couple of things. I um. So one uh, upcoming pretty soon. I'm going to. Um, Lubbock, Texas, the way it's going to work out. I'm going to go with Doc Parsons, my, um, my bison guy. He's up at the, owns the Stratford Animal Hospital, Stratford, Oklahoma. And, um, the guy I always do a lot of work with, um, very popular bison guy. I've asked, I asked him if I could go out and travel with him to a, another bison ranch that he always goes and works on. Um, and he goes and works the bison. He's got a good relationship with this gentleman. And uh, so that's one thing is in uh, October 23rd, uh, we're gonna go out there and I'm gonna go to Lubbock, Texas to work on this ranch uh, just for a day. We're gonna work the bison. So I'm excited about that to go out there and, and hang out, see a new herd, get some different experience and uh, definitely go to a way different place out there in the middle of nowhere. So I'm going to do that. <laughs> um, thanks, Seth. Hey, buddy. Now, this is Dunbar. This is, uh, he's pretty popular too. He's our, he's our, he's our man. He's our bull. But so that's one thing. And then, uh, Kevin and I are finishing a corral that we started building and so on this corral, uh, we're gonna we're making it a little bit bigger. We're beefing it up, and I'm rushing a little bit this time because I because uh, we've got something coming. We've uh, I may be the herd may be growing a lot faster than I thought. So uh, somebody reached out to me, and I had an opportunity, and uh, my wife and I went and looked, and. Um, in Oklahoma at some Oklahoma bison. And so we, uh, 
we may be uh, we may be growing faster than I thought. So stay tuned for that. I'm pretty excited about about a certain a certain animal. Um, you guys are gonna think you'll be blown away if everything works out and uh, we finish this corral because we want when we bring uh, when we bring new animals in, you have to you have to uh, kind of pin them up in your corral for several days. And um, see if this calf will eat it. Nope, not taking it. Um, you have to pin uh, new animals up in your corral. And so we're getting our corral finished so that we, uh, we can bring home some more animals. So be ready for that. Um, I don't know for sure when that's going to happen, but I wanted to let you guys know. But there is a certain animal that is a part of this, uh, what we're getting. And um, I'm really excited about it. Uh, so, but other than that, we got Lubbock happening. Also, November 10th. November 10th, I made this announcement in my last video. We're having a bison sale. That's part of the Oklahoma Bison Association. We are having the annual sale. And uh, it's going to be in Perkins, Oklahoma. Perkins is up uh, really close to my home, away from home. Stillwater, Oklahoma. Go Pokes, Cowboys. Go Cowboys. Um, so Perkins is right outside of Stillwater, and the sale is going to be November 10th. It's usually about 10 o'clock in the morning, but uh, I'll go up there the night before, and I will be working that sale. Let you guys take a look at the calves. Paul, Paul. Let me read some of your comments here. Thank you guys for the happy birthdays. I appreciate that. Uh, Garrison Martin asked, how many acres does one bison need? Well, that all depends on where you're located and how much grass you have and, and all sorts of those, those uh, details. But here, um, I'm thinking we're probably at maybe four to five acres per bison. Um, can I show you the young males? Uh, yes, there's, uh, there's one right there. He's going to the sale. And I'm, here's the other one right here, coming up close to me. This is Chaske. He's, he's coming to get him some cubes. He's our first bull ever here. The other one's there. But, let me see who else... Rosa, Rosa Williams, I need to make, make an announcement. Rosa, thank you for sending me the puzzle. Yes, sorry, I haven't reached out to you. But yes, we love that puzzle, and I'm excited to to uh, to make that, put that puzzle together with Brooks someday when, when she's old enough. Oh my gosh, look at this bull. Hey, get back. Too close. You guys are way too close. Look at this guy. Climbing in the ATV. Hey, can I help you? It will be hard, Doug, to uh, to sell those bulls, but and one of them's right here. I uh, see. Looky there. That's because she is a queen bee, and when I say queen bee, that's exactly what I mean. She uh, 
if there's one bison that will run you out of the pasture, it's her because she's ran Kevin and I um, out of a corral. She's ran us into the ATV before. Got to watch that one. That is Quapaw. She can be very feisty. So a little update, uh, Olivia asked, has Dunbar played with his toy? He's only played with it a couple of times. I'm, it's kind of a disappointment, but um, I'm gonna have to try to do something different. And uh, I've got some ideas for him to, to rub on, but um, we're gonna try something different, so. Anastasia, how much do the young bulls weigh? Uh, this bull that was just here, uh, Chaske, he probably weighs, um, probably anywhere from five to 600 pounds. Yes, Alberto, I can touch him. See, there you go. Uh, we'll sell them. Oh, look at there. We will sell them. Uh, the, they do it by classes when you sell them. So these young bulls, because they're the same age, will they'll be in the same class. They may go through the pen together, but they're, you can buy them and together, or you can buy them separate. Hey, get back, get back. Too close. Police, uh, how's Eleanor? Eleanor is great. She's, uh, there she is, right there. She's still Eleanor. Nothing hasn't changed. And then you got this bull. Hey, get back. Pull those weeds off, yeah. Heidi, uh, you watch a lot of hoof channels. How do you trim these? Uh, we do not trim hooves. Thank gosh, because that would be uh, a train wreck. I do not want to trim their hooves. We don't have to do that. That's the great thing about bison. They can be very low maintenance, and they'll take care of themselves. Coach Meager, yes. Any thoughts on turning the silage into a microbrewery? That'd be great, yes or an Airbnb or something. I, I like I like your thinking, Coach Meager. Any pregnancies? Yes, hopefully uh, hopefully our heifers are bred. You can tell on some of them, their bellies are already dropping. Um, you can kind of see some signs that they have been bred. But, um, We'll see how, how big they get over time, and you'll, you'll be able to tell that they've been bred. Back. Uh, Randy asked, can they, can they uh, be dehorned as calves like cattle? Yeah, you can. You can dehorn them if you want, but uh, most people don't dehorn them. Andrew asked a good question. When can you harvest these animals? So uh, as far as meat or market, uh, the best time is um, two years. It's like 18 to 24 months is the prime age. Uh, you, want, you want these uh, animals to weigh at least a thousand pounds um, when you take them to slaughter. You don't want them to lay any to weigh any less than that uh their yield is average it's about 57 percent so that's the other thing is people ask me all the time do you castrate bison no you do not and that's because bison can't breed until they're two years old you have to 
uh, make a decision what you want to do, especially with the bull. Um, you know, if you want to uh, sell for meat, you have to do it before two years old because they'll start breeding. Uh, when will the babies be born? Uh, new babies. So typically uh, our babies are start being born in June. June all the way up to July. Yes, Pamela, aren't the horns a way to protect themselves? Yes, they, uh, they use those horns. See hers? You do not mess with her. She's got some sharp horns. And uh, they use those horns to beat everything off. See his little nubs there? Hey, back, buddy. We have these bison on um, about 15 to 20 acres ish. I'm not exactly sure, but somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, Jason is how many acres we have them on. Uh, would you ever bottle feed a bison, a baby bison? Um, uh, Ash, coming from Ash. No, yeah, that happens uh, every now and then, but you don't want to have to do that because um, they can kind of grow up and be, be kind of a pain because they always want to be around you and, and a little bit too close and attached to you. So we try not to, if, if you don't, if we don't have to bottle raise, that's awesome. Thank you, Pepper, for the birthday announcement from Montgomery, Texas. Uh, we give them minerals. Uh, Jeremy asked, uh, does the soil there have selenium in it? I'm not sure much about the soil, uh, but yes, we do give them minerals. Doug asked, have they ever gotten aggressive with me? Yeah, I was just talking about her. Uh, that's Quapaw. She's, the other day I was trying to build some pens and she, uh, she ran me back into the ATV. So you got to pay attention. Heidi asked, what does bison taste like? Uh, the meat is delicious, actually. It's, uh, it's very lean, low in cholesterol. It's uh, high in protein, low in fat. It's a very good meat. Um, you got to know how to cook it, though. So if you go to a restaurant and order bison meat, uh, you hope that they know how to cook it because um, bison cooks a lot faster than beef does. But it's it's very good, and it's good for you. Andrea asked, do you have people camp or do field trips for schools? Um, no, I've never done that. I, it makes me a little bit nervous to do that. Uh, if I had some more acreage where we could get out away from the bison from a distance, uh, we would consider doing the field trips. Plus, bison uh, don't like a bunch of people around, to be honest with you. They, uh, they don't handle that very well. And plus, I, I don't know if a bunch of screaming kids would... <laughs> if the if the buys would like that or not so but we've thought about it and we'll see coach meager how many hours a day do you think they sleep on average and do they have different seasonal sleep cycles depending on weather i don't know if it depends uh summer for sure they're gonna sleep more during the day uh, because it's hot and i noticed that during the summer they get up early in the morning and graze they do about brunch time and then they rest for most of the day and then they come out in the evenings. As far as the winter, um, I'm going to assume that that changes because they like the cold weather and they're going to be out more. But they do sleep a lot during the day though. See, this is a problem. See, I parked over here so no bison could get in here. There's Belle Star. She's kind of feisty. And then you have the baby here with his head stuck in the ATV 
being all crazy because he wants some cubes. Okay, buddy, but if somebody comes and scares him, he could jump in the ATV with me. And I do not want that. Jennifer from Connecticut. How far are we from, we from Oklahoma City? We're about an hour and a half uh, south of Oklahoma City, not very far. Thanks, Coach Meager. Does Daniel come to see us often, uh, Marlene? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're family. We, we see each other. We saw each other last night. We're about to go over to, to the arms and eat dinner. Yeah, we see each other all the time. He, they come and see the bison every now and then. How, Lori asked how Brooks is. Brooks is doing good. She turned eight months yesterday. Thank you for asking. Uh, she's, uh, she's, she's, besides my wife, she is, she's the greatest thing there is, I think. Heidi, thanks for watching from the UK. Uh, Jerison, Austin, that's how you pronounce it. Do males have bigger horns than females? I wouldn't say bigger horns. Um, I would say broader. He's turned away from me now, but um, their bull's horns grow out different. Notice uh, this female here. Hers are curved back in. You see that bull over there? His are curved. You see uh, Chaskes here that are growing out. I think they just form different. They grow a little bit different. You can definitely tell um, when they're this age if they're a male or a female by easily looking at their horns and um, seeing some other ways to identify. Teresa, maybe do live chats with school kids. I think that'd be awesome being a, an ex-school teacher. Jennifer, where's your, where's your uh, family's cattle? farm ranch ash ask what is the best fencing for bison that's probably a uh, number one question guys we've got um, a barbed wire fence um, around our exterior we usually use six and a half foot tall post and we do six strands of barbed wire uh, in our corral we're doing pipe at least six feet tall some people do the really tall stuff get back she gets a little too close to me. I don't like how she gets close to me. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, but there's lots of people who do the high fence, like the 10 foot tall barbed wire or uh, field wire fence. Some people uh, do hot wire. Uh, Noel um, asks, what's the biggest surprise you've had since bringing them to the ranch? Uh, since we started this thing, the biggest surprise is just, to be honest with you, watching these animals run and watching how powerful they are when you work them. And I, it's amazing how strong and athletic these animals are when you work them or when you get them running in a pasture and how fast they can can run it's amazing just to just to see how just to see how god made these creatures and when you spend time with them and you get them and you get them out here and they run and stuff you just see really the strength and the power these animals um have it's a good question Carolyn, I don't have a horse. Yeah, uh, she asked if he, if I had a horse. I don't have one. I don't think I've ever had one actually. 
Hey Rita from Kansas. Jason said, I've always heard to have one acre per bison. Do you find that yet to be true? Any concerns? Um, let me see here. About get, Any concerns then about getting more bison soon? Uh, it all really depends on that right there, the grass, the ground. How much grass do you have uh, and can the ground sustain a certain number of bison. I'm actually going to this month have a guy from the National Resource Conservation Service, the NRCS service from our local agency come out and actually give me an estimate on how many bison we can have here on this property. I think you can have at least um, one bison for three, four, maybe five acres. Uh, Jerison, if I'm saying it right, asked if, uh, do you have to keep your fingers flat when you feed them cubes? No, I usually, oh, here, let me give you a cube example. So here, let me give you, I just keep it like this and you can keep it flat or hold it out for them and put it in their mouth. They don't have top teeth, so they won't bite you. Why Keisha asked, are bison related to cows or buffalo? Um, well, their common name is buffalo, but I don't know if they're all kin to the Cape or the Asian buffalo or water buffalo, but um, because of the decline way back when, I think a lot of bison do have a slight percentage of cattle genes in them. Thanks, Coach Meager. Coach Meager asks, how does the grass doing this season after the burn? Well, it did really good after the burn, and then we had a late frost and uh, died, but then it came back with Bermuda. I'm not a huge fan of Bermuda. That's what all this is out here. Um, but Kevin and I, uh, we're going to try to do some different stuff and try to change it up because the bison aren't huge fans of Bermuda. Ed, hey Ed. Ed Kirkpatrick, do you keep anything in the silos? Well, these are old dairy barn silos. When when we got them, when, we, when mom and Kevin got the place, there was, this one was empty and then the other one um, had grain in it. That one had grain in it and we actually set it on fire, <laughs> to be honest with you. We burnt the inside of it, me being a pyromaniac. Uh, I, we set the inside of it on fire to try to burn it out and clean it up. But this one here next to me is actually is actually empty. So there's there's nothing really in them besides some ash and some old grain in one of them. But we've, we've thought about doing some stuff with them. I'm parked over here because uh, it's windy and the silos are a good wind block. Sally, good question. Are you looking to replace the yearling bulls with more heifers? Um, yes, kind of. Yes, uh, we're going to get rid of those bulls. That's because we need, we, need, uh, we need more heifers is what we need. And plus, we've got these right here that we'll be able to breed in a couple years. So that's a good question. Olivia asked, what made you want to raise bison? Uh, just, they're just so amazing. They're, um, they're just cool animals. I mean, look at them. They're so different than cattle and, you know, these animals. What's, what's really cool is that these, these animals almost went extinct at one time. And I think that's so cool that they're right here in our pasture. These animals, um, you know, got down to less than a thousand. When there, when, when there were 30 to 60 million of them, they got down uh, to less than a thousand and, and were saved by some brave people and uh, we're lucky to have them today. So, David, what should I expect to pay for a young grade bison? Um, if you're talking about a yearling or like a calf, a calf, it just depends. The market's 
has fluctuated because of Corona, but um, you're, I mean, you could pay anywhere from a hundred, eight hundred to to a thousand dollars for a calf. Um, for a yearling bull, uh, you can pay anywhere from twelve, thirteen hundred up to two thousand dollars, depending on what what the animal looks like. Victoria asks, is it possible to have bison get a flu shot? I'm not sure about the flu shot, but uh, c types of vaccinations that these guys get, uh, they just get um, wormer mostly every year. And if they have any other issues, we will handle it. Sometimes antibiotics, like if they're sick, but Andrea from Germany, thank you for watching. Hey there, that's awesome. Can you ride a bison, Jaris? <laughs> Um, yeah, there's people that have done it. Uh, go watch a guy on a buffalo. He did it. But um, I'm sure if you had one and you raised it as a, as a bottle baby, you could definitely probably ride one. I've heard of people doing that. Jody asked, how many acres do we have now? Um, well, there's 40 acres here, but the bison are on are about 20. Hey, Dennis from Southwest Minnesota. Pablo asks, do we have any other animals? Kevin raises uh, some sheep. He's got some hair sheep here uh, he, that, he, that he has. And um, he just kind of has goats and sheep every now and then. There's a sheep farm on the other side of town. We, uh, we raise sheep for a long time. But um, him and Grandma raise those sheep. Uh, Sarah asked, do bison have the same type of digestive system as cows? Yes, pretty much. Uh, pretty, pretty s standard makeup as far as, um, the stomach goes with the bison. Janie asked, I've never heard bison does not have top teeth. Yeah, I wish I could show them to you, but I don't think I can. Here's here's Dunbar. He's he's being silly. These are cockaburs, in case you guys don't know. We sprayed this year and we killed tons of cockaburs, the weed. But he always finds a way to get in them. I don't know how, but he does. Hey, buddy. Look at this big old guy. Nancy asked, have you ever seen a white buffalo? I have personally never actually live seen a white bison. Uh, I've seen pictures of them, and I know some people that have had white bison before, but uh, I think that would be pretty cool. Mary asked, how long do they live? These animals can live up to 25 years, much longer than a cow. Marlene asks, how long have you cared for the bison? I've cared for them for, uh, this is our three, three years. Uh, we got them in 2018, spring of 2018. Thanks, Al. Just uh, Janice, good question. It's a question I always get. How long is a gestation period for bison? Uh, a reference I always use is the gestation period or pregnancy of a woman. Um, so roughly nine to ten months. City Girl Country Heart, how many bison would you love to have? I would love to have... 40 to 50 is kind of my number. Now, that depends on land, too. Here, we probably can't have that many, obviously. But I'm um, always looking for land, and uh, we want to have our own place a little bit bigger so we can have some more bison. But I'd say 40 or 50 would be, would be good. Janice, is there a number of bison in... What is the number of bison in North America today? I want to say... Public and private, 
in North America. I, um, I want to say in the United States, it's like over 500,000. The goal is to get to a million. And now that doesn't include Canada. I don't know how many there are in Canada too, but there's a lot in Canada as well. Ash, will you have to change the bull after a couple of years? That just depends on him. It depends on if he keeps doing his job. And um, it's possible, but these bulls can get worn out depending on the herd size because the other thing is you can have one bull supposedly can breed 15 to 20 heifers. And uh, if the herd grows, then we'll need another bull. So we'll see when that time comes, but... Yes, Randy asked if we're going to keep these younger bulls. We're going to get rid of all of our bulls eventually. Yeah. Lisa asked, when will the babies be due and would you film it live? Yeah, I, I would love to catch it. I, I don't know if I could do it live, but, well, I mean, I would love to catch um, them having the baby live and catch it on video. And I can make a video. Out of it. I'd love to do that. Maybe I can, Maybe I can do that next year. Karen, do you trim their hooves? No, we don't. That would be very difficult. Luckily, we don't have to. Thank you, Noel. Roswell, Georgia. Has Dunbar been playing with his toy yet? No, I... I, I he, he hasn't been playing with as much. He just still beats on the troughs like normal. That's what he's doing over there. I don't know if you guys can see him. Oh, there I am. That's him. Beating on the trough. There's the new barn, by the way. He just likes making racket. Marlene, how many calves has Dunbar had? He's had three. Jarrison, do they like scratching posts or other toys like cattle? Yes, they do. I'm going to try to build a scratch post, actually. Daniel asked, if uh, where do you plan to sell your meat? Or, Yeah, farmer's market stores. We, we've talked about that. We're not sure yet, but... Once we the herd grows and we're able to, to actually harvest some bison, we will be selling the meat. Stay tuned on that. It may be a while. Thank you for the birthday, and uh, Phil. James asked, are your bison woods or plains? Uh, mine are plains. Most of the bison in North America... Um, especially the lower states are Plains Bison. Victoria asks, is it possible for bison to ever eat oatmeal or just regular grass? Yeah, they they can eat all kinds of grass. They get a little picky depending on the time of the year, but um, they do also eat grains as well. Sally asked if we feed silage. We do not feed silage um, here. We don't really have that availability, but I know a lot of people that do. We will uh, start putting out a bale of hay here pretty soon. Probably within the next month, we'll be putting out a bale of hay, and that'll be fun. Al asked, what if you would castrate one of your young bulls and raise it for the meat? You don't have to castrate. Um, because here's two things. One, bison can't breed until they're two. And then also, uh, you have to process them before they're two because you don't want them to be overweight. It's got to be, you know, anywhere from a thousand to 1300 pounds when you want to process them. Ellison from, uh, hey there from Indiana. Is there any issue with inbreeding with bison? No, nobody has ever said anything about or I've never heard of any issues with inbreeding. 
Carl asks, would you ever do artificial insemination? I don't think so. I, I don't think we'd ever have to do that. I, I kind of want to stay from the that way of it, the mechanical way of doing it. I'd like to just keep it as natural as possible. James asked, do you harvest them or just conservation? We haven't har harvested any yet. We do it for conservation and for breeding as well. Charlotte, how are the cabins doing? The cabins are great. We've been busy. We've been booked up since uh, mid-May. It's been crazy. Thank you for asking. Jonathan, that's a good idea. He said you should put the barrel on the ground and maybe they will push the toy around for fun. I have definitely thought about that. And um, the only thing I worry about is him pushing on the ground is running it into a, a, a fence and tearing up a fence. But I guarantee you he'd hit that barrel. Noel asked, will the cockaburras fall off their hides? Uh, eventually, they kind of bury into them. They don't cause any harm. This this hide is so thick, guys. I mean, it's it's a really thick hide. Way thicker than cattle. Um, but they'll just kind of burrow in their hair. You can kind of see her some. I thought we got rid of all the cockaburras, but we didn't. But um, it'll just kind of sit in there. I hate them, but... I can't get rid of all of them. Lisa, buffalo is a great tasting meat. Yes, it is It is really good tasting meat. Olivia, the, the car wash brushes. Dun Olivia said Dunbar would probably enjoy a car wash. The brushes would be fun. I know. I would love to have one. I think that'd be neat to have out here. He'd probably tear it up, but who knows. The little calves, uh, Landon's asking how much the little guys are weighing. Uh, they're probably, oh, probably 200 pounds maybe. I'm not really sure. We're going to run them across the scale here probably in November. We'll see. TC Games, thank you very much. Hello. Thank you. Thank you for that. Critter asked... Uh, do you plan on grooming them mainly to get the burrs out of their coats? Uh, no, not really. Uh, I don't think that these animals would let me. What we would have to do is we'd have to put them in the handling system over here. You'd have to put them in the squeeze chute and then you'd have to comb it out. Uh, and I don't think, uh, I don't think we're going to do that. I wish I could though. Thank you for the birthday wishes from Tanya over in New Zealand. Thank you. That's far away. I'd love to go there. Yes, Christian. Um, thank you. Yeah, I can see it. Thank you. Um, let me see. Who is that? TC Game 65. Yes, thank you for that. I, I, that's awesome. I've ac actually never done a super chat before, so... Jason, how much money up front do you think it really takes to start a five-head bison herd? This understanding you already have 20 acres, but no fencing. Fencing is going to be your main thing. You've got to have a fence, and then you also have to have a way of working them. So you've got to have a corral, and you've got to have a handling facility because these animals, you, you've got to do that so you can take care of them. And uh, you can't just let them sit out in the pasture. But if you want a herd of five, a starter herd. Um, you're talking yearlings, probably. That's your fastest way, or you can buy some bred heifers and a bull. Um, you know, you're looking at uh, yearling yearling heifers or yearling bulls are probably about fifteen hundred, thirteen to fifteen hundred dollars a piece right now.
Francis asked, is it expensive to feed them? Not really. I think I did the math one time and it was like 17 cents per animal per day. It, it's not that expensive, but we don't, we don't feed them like a ton of feed. Uh, it just depends on the seasons and how it's all changing. But Eileen asked, uh, thank you. She loves the videos. Did any of them ever charge you? Yes, this one right here. She charged me a couple days ago, and she also charged Kevin, my stepdad, a couple days ago, too. Um... Selena, Christy, uh, do cows and bison get along if pastured together? Yeah, I think they do. Um, I'm not sure how I wouldn't do that probably, but I wouldn't suggest it. But I think they do get along. I've actually never done a super chat, guys, to be honest with you. So you probably have to teach me how to do it. How do they, um, Sharita? How do they react to your dog? They do not like dogs, to be honest with you, at all. Victoria asks, do Native Americans ever come and make traditional offerings to the bison? No, they never do. I um, a lot of the Native American tribes have bison to themselves. Yes, there's Illinois. Blevins Family Farm. You're a stud. No, you're a stud. You're a stud. You guys go check out Blevins Family Farm. Good friend of mine I went to school with. Raising some goats. Those things are the funniest little critters. You guys go watch Tyson. Blevins Family Farm. Tammy, how did you and Daniel end up working with bison in college? We both worked at the National Park um, in the summertime. We were biological technicians. That was, our, that was our title. I mean, it was a fancy title, but we did a lot of cool stuff. And um, we just got to, they had bison at the park we were at. I don't know, a herd of eight to 10, and we were able to get in the pasture and take care of them. And that's kind of where we fell in love with them. Well, I did. I know Daniel does too. Nancy asked, what was the worst situation you've had with bison? Uh, probably them getting out. That's the worst situation possible, I think, um, or, or losing an animal. But when they got out, boy, that's scary. Alex, how am I doing today? I'm doing very good. Thank you for asking. Hanging out with the bison. Noel asked, what do they eat in the winter? They still graze some. Uh, we feed them hay. We give them plenty of hay, and then we also supplement feed them. Sandy asked, wasn't Belle Star kind of ornery in the past? Yes, she still is. She still is. Thank you, Margaret, from uh, Hawaii. That's awesome. How many, uh, Elizabeth asked, how many bison do I have? Um, we have uh, 13 right now.
TC Games, can you hear me now? Are you with me? <laughs> oh man, I don't even know. Thank you, Coach Meager. <laughs> oh gosh, you guys are a mess. <laughs> Sorry, I'm doing a lot of learning here. Thanks, Coach Meager, for the help. You're 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 a dang good guy, Coach Meager, guys. He's he's on here. Coach Meager, I lived with him in Plano, Texas, when I was teaching down there, and uh, he came up for a birthday party last night and surprised me. So he's a good dude. Taught me a lot about technology too. Noel, where'd you get? The name Cross Timbers. Well, Cross Timbers um, is a region in Oklahoma where the prairie um, meets where the woods meets the prairie. And um, we're right here in the middle of that area. And so that's where I got the name. Jason asked, uh, do you get a lot of snow here in the winter? We do not in southern Oklahoma. Up in the northern or north in the panhandle of Oklahoma, they get more snow but not a ton down here in Oklahoma or Southern Oklahoma. Shannon Sadler coming in loud and clear from Cherokee nation. Hey, there we go. J Oklahoma. I know where that is. Thank you, Shannon. Thanks, Alexa. Coffee asks, will you will uh will they let me pet them? Yeah, absolutely. Especially if I got cubes, they'll let me pet them. They love their cubes. So here's my uh, yearling heifers. I bought it last year's sale. There is a grand champion heifer. She's beautiful. I don't have a name for her yet, but um, really, I kind of slowed down naming them after I've. After the herd grew to 13, but. Oh, looky here, big guy. Look at him, he's blocking me. He's cutting me off from his women. Do you guys see that? Look at that. Get your butt out of my face. You guys see that? Those two heifers are here, and he came right between me and those heifers like he's cutting me off. There's a term for that, but I'm not going to use it on here. Come on, Dunbar. You silly guy. Sandy asks, how do the bison handle the heat in the summer? Uh, they handle it pretty well. They stay in the shade quite a bit during the day, but they drink lots and lots of water. The red dogs are all gone. No more red dogs uh, coming from Grant. <laughs> Vivian, 13 is supposedly an unlucky number. You are right. I'm going to tell my wife that. Yes. Well, we're going to lose a couple here soon, so we'll be down to 11, but then we may have some changes. So, uh, Vivian, to answer your question, you are correct, and I think that's a great idea. We, 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 may, uh, we may have an even number here pretty soon. Thank you, Wolfer. Thank you for joining the live chat. Do you ever use Flossberry or whatever it is on the bison? Yeah, Dunbar's got some... Uh, um, some flies. Those look like horn flies. We have a rub, and then I also try to hand spray them with a little spray gun, but I haven't done it in a while. He needs it. Is boy? That how you say it? How old am I? Oh man, that's a good question. 
Well, I'm uh, 34 currently, and I'll be 35 in a couple of days. JJD1913 asked how the rental cabins are doing. They're doing great. I've been working so hard um, on those, and um, it's been very busy. We've had a lot of people. It's been pretty here in Oklahoma, so we've had a lot of people come and stay at our cabins, and um, I've uh, put in new floors and done a lot of work on it too. Victoria, happy Indigenous Peoples Day from, oh man, I don't know how to say that, First Nations in Canada. Thank you, Victoria. Arnold, do you sell the red dogs? No females to hold back to add to the herd. Um, we'll keep the females, but we're going to get rid of the males later on. Alexa asks, what are the things that get tangled on their face? I think it's in every video. Here, it just depends on the seasons. That weed grows here in the late summer, and it's called a cockaburro. So we absolutely, I hate them for sure. Ron from Wetmore, Colorado. Any predators on the bison? No. These suckers keep everything away from them. We don't have wolves here, thank gosh. Charlene asks, you still having problems with Dunbar and the feed troughs? Yes, just that one plastic one. He loves to whack with his horns. Anastasia, is there a, ever a problem with their bottom teeth overgrowing like alpacas? Nope, no issues like that. Not that I know them. Anna Marie from Australia. Hey there. TC Games 65 should send a bison hot tube. <laughs> yes. Charlotte, do you have cabins for one? Yes, we do. We have some smaller cabins. Jason, any coyotes or other nuisance animal problems on the land that disturbs the bison? Nope. Not really. There's no... I mean, there's coyotes around, but uh, they ain't coming in here with these animals, I promise you. Joanne, Dust, do you ever have to trim the bison's feet? Nope. Never had to. Hopefully never will. Low maintenance animals. Where is Arms Family Homestead? I know who says this. Hey Dusty, FYI, I'm your mom's favorite child. That's a Daniel Arms comment right there for sure. I've heard that for how long? How many years have I heard that? I've heard that for a long time. Daniel always giving me heck about something. But I'm the baby boy, don't forget that. Thanks, Daniel. All right, guys, I am, uh, we've been on this thing for about an hour now. Um, Pamela, I'll answer yours real quick. The bison are getting away from me. Got a bull here laying down. You guys let me know. I've also thought about doing a live video of the bison cell, let you guys learn and see how that goes. Um, that may be an option if I can figure it out. There's one of the yearling bulls just hanging out.
Thank you, Ron, for the birthday wish. Thank you, uh, Sean Power, for the birthday wish from Fenwick Island, Delaware. Golly, that's way over there. Pamela asked, do you think Dunbar will be taking his ladies on another date? Well, um, hopefully he, he won't because he, uh, he's got them all bred, but so not till next year. TC Games. Oh, a hot tub. <laughs> I got you now. Nancy, thank you for the live chat. I'm not very good at this. I haven't done it very often, but I try to do it every, every now and then for you guys. Is it Miser Mike? Tell Daniel you don't like his fried fish when you go there. <laughs> hey, I do. He does a lot of fish frying for us, and I love that stuff. Good birthday dinner. Sorry, it's kind of windy. Shannon asked, Dusty, any chance of ever getting or breeding a white bison? Uh, you know, some people kind of, there's some genetics issues there with white bison. You got to be careful because some people use cattle. Um, there's certain breeds of white cattle where people will try to breed the bison and you can create some issues there. So I try to stay away from, I try to stay away from uh, the interbreeding stuff, not interbreeding, but uh, breeding with other uh, cattle. We're not going to do that, but would it be very cool? It'd be very cool um, and exciting to have a white bison. So we'll just maybe get it naturally if that happens. So thank you for asking, Shannon. Jody, you're in Nebraska. That's where my wife is from. Coach Meager, thank you for the super chat, buddy. Um, can you show the bison? Or, oh, we want to see the barn. Oh, crap. Golly, that scared me. He just snuck behind me. Hey, what are you doing? You guys want to see the barn real quick? I probably shouldn't be walking out here, but I am. Just don't let my wife catch me. Okay. Sorry, sun's in my face. I'm gonna do one more video over the barn. But uh, this is kind of it. So, um, sorry it is windy. So here's the handling facility here. So the bison will come through here. I'll go through that gate and there's the tub. There's a holding alley right there. We hold them there. We weigh them here. They run through the squeeze chute here. We gotta put a new head gate on it. And then from there, we kick them back out. So. This is the a lot of it done, so got a little bit more to go.